Since I was in kindergarten school, I was taught to hate all Americans, and I never thought that I would become friends with any Americans. When I was young, I was just an ordinary boy. I had a hard time waking up in the morning, spent almost all day acting out the adventures of my favorite characters, uh, climbing trees and jumping down, thinking that I thought I could fly. At that time, I literally thought that I could fly if I, can, if I practice a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking in front of a beautiful group of audience was never in my thought, and uh, I never dreamed of it. But then, when I was 12 years old, everything has changed. My father died of starvation, when, starvation and, uh, and then my home was taken away from uh, for death. Next, my sister uh, went to China to earn money, and, but she promised me that uh, she would return with, uh, shortly with my favorite food. And um, she was a great sister. She was seven years older than me. For me, she was uh, sort of my uh, mother figure, because uh, there were times that I didn't really get to spend time with my mom. But I didn't know that I wouldn't be able to see her uh, for a long time. So I told her, you know, okay, if you're gonna come back soon, okay, I will see you in a week. And that was the last word I said to her. And my mom decided to get married with uh, another man because we had to survive and to find a place to stay. In the same way, uh, he needed somebody to uh, take care of uh, his own daughter and uh, also provide uh, food. And uh, so the first day I moved into, I guess, my stepfather's house, I was asked to go out and make money for the new family. I was only 12 years old, and uh, there were not many things that I could do to uh, you know, make money to provide uh, food on the table, but I had no choice. I had to. And uh, one night, after I was wandering in the city for a couple of hours, I saw an apartment with uh, the, you know, the balcony attached in the wall, and uh, that height was not that high. It was about maybe six feet uh, from the ground. And what I saw was that uh, I saw a uh, uh, armfuls of uh, firewood that are uh, stacked on the balcony. Although that uh, armful of uh, wood, firewood, may not worth much, I thought going home with them was better than returning home without empty hands. So I ran with full speed, trying to catch the edge, and I failed it a couple times. And uh, I guess I didn't practice enough when I was young. Uh, but uh, finally, I got it. I grabbed it, and I got on it. However, somebody started calling me. And then uh, I looked down, and he was pointing at me and said, come down. I mean, at, the, at this point, I, was, you know, I couldn't even run away. I mean, he was in the ground. I mean, I couldn't like, literally fly away. I wish I could. So I went, I jumped down, and as soon as I landed my feet, he started feeding me up. And maybe after 20 to 25 minutes, he let me go. So I went back to uh, my stepfather's house. I was thinking that uh, my eyes were swollen and uh, my face was uh, covered with blood from my mouth. And I thought that um, my step stepfather would uh, ask me what happened, and he would actually uh, worry about. I got in, in except that uh, he started beating me up for another two minutes. 
I guess my crime was that I came home with uh, empty hands. Um, this is my first time sharing this story in public. This is one of the many stories that I have kept inside myself for many years. It was just uh, too painful memories to bring up. But today I decided to share this story with you because I realized it's not just my story. It's a uh, it's story of many North Korean homeless boys like I was. In that year, I became homeless and an uh, orphan, one of many homeless boys and girls in that time uh, in North Korea. One day, I found myself on the street begging for food. First couple of the days, I went to a uh, local market uh, to customers, asking them, can you give me your leftover soup? Mm -hmm. I think I said more than a thousand times inside my head before I actually said it out loud, out loud. And this is when I gave up my dignity. I gave up to live as human, because uh, at the time, that didn't matter to me. All I had to worry was about surviving, because uh, that's the only way that I would be able to uh, see my sister. And you know, that was my core. Basically, I ended up at the city market, a place where almost all children came here at least once, tagging along with their mother. But now it became a place for begging. It became a place to survive for the next two hours. The train station where I used to come with uh, excitement to visit my grandparents on other town. It became an, a shelter for a long, chilly night with an empty stomach. My first night in the train station, I cried so much, lying down on, dirt, on the, the corner of the wooden bench. The station reminded me of my past with my parents and my sister. What made me cry the most was not the hunger pains or the cold, but it was the loneliness, uh, the emptiness inside my heart. I think I kept asking why. Why do I have to be on the street? Why do I have to be on, in the train station while uh, most of my friends are going to class with uh, their books and bags on it? During this time, I, saw, I also saw countless malnourished children lying down on dirt, agonizing with hunger pains, waiting for their time to come. Once. I saw about a five-year-old boy lying down on dirt, uh, repeating the same word over and over. He goes, uh, food and food. And then next, he calls his mom. Mm. And that was uh, his last word, wishing his mother to bring him food. The next day, he just whispered so softly, no one could understand what he was trying to say. And after that, I don't remember what happened to him. After three years of waiting and for my sister's return, I kind of saw the limit, limit there. Like I couldn't see my future there. I couldn't see that I could survive any longer. So I decided to go to China and look for her myself instead. I decided to go during the day because uh, first, I was still a kid. I was only 15 years old. And uh, second, uh, I never heard anyone try during the day. So I thought I might have a chance. And um, it worked. Uh, I don't necessarily want to take that credit for my, uh, it was God's help. Oh, you know, it was a miracle. I made it to China in, on February 15th. And this was quite ironic that uh, I didn't worry about getting food in China because in my mind, 
that uh, oh, if I go to China because there is surplus food, at least in the region that I was heading for, I thought that they would sell food without uh, no questions or no uh, hesitance. Surprisingly, they uh, didn't really want to sell food with me. Later that I, that I found out there is certain penalties to help certain, I mean, North Korean defectors. And this is where I found or recognized value of freedom. Because in North Korea, even though I didn't have food, like at least I could go outside and walk around. But in China, one step that I go forward was about measurable uh, risking life. During the first couple of weeks, I sleep I slept in the mountains uh, while it was, uh, there was still snow remained. And uh, it was actually my first time uh, sleeping in the mountains. But later, through uh, uh, underground church and missionaries, I had happened to meet a uh, link, a group of people that uh, I later found out it's a link, uh, organization that started with college students. And with their very hard work, I came to America as uh, North Korean refugees. Uh, in America, I had opportunity to start a new life. I went to high school and graduated in four years and, and went on to attend college. And last year in June, I was invited on TED stage and shared my story as first North Korean homeless. Recently, about two weeks ago, I went to visit uh, my foster family in Richmond, Virginia. And um, although I should have let my mom, foster mom, know that I'm going, uh, you know, I just showed up during the midnight. Uh, <laughs> I had a key, so I didn't have to wake her up. And I found my bedroom and I slept. And then the next morning, my mom goes like, oh, Joseph, you're here. Uh, what a surprise. I didn't know you were coming. And uh, she goes, uh, what would you like to have breakfast? And I told her, you know, whatever. You know, I'm not really in the mood for breakfast. But that very simple question, what would you like to have breakfast, captured my thoughts for a second. Like about 10 years ago, I remember waking up on the street worrying about where to find next meal to survive for another day. Being here with all of you today is new reality for me. To one hating Americans now, to now considering you as my friends and working together to help North Koreans who are still fighting to survive for another day. My story is possible to exist because of you. And I know with your hope, we can only bring more story of Joseph's. Thanks so much for your support.